We talking about something serious today. To everybody listening, throw your hands in the air. We gonna get it today, y'all. Yeah. This is my first beat on Garage Band. No, let me stop playing. Let me stop playing. Yeah, another day, y'all. See, I'm still having fun. I'm still trying. I'm still pushing. I'm still maintaining. You know, it's a lot going on in the world. Um, I really need to contact my cousins. I just thought about something to all the people in um, Texas dealing with that natural disaster out there, dealing with the weather and all that stuff, and then the uh, power outage. You know, um, wishing you all well, hoping you all get through that. You know, I, I normally don't um, watch the news very often because that's all I did in the military. But seeing that, that's pretty uh, devastating. So, you know, I wish the best to everybody out there and hope you guys make it through and all that. You see, I'm daddy of the year. But keeping things moving forward, tomorrow we're going to talk about what's going on next with the channel. But today... As promised, I want to give you guys a little bit of what's happening with me. I have no idea why my computer is so loud right now. I think I got it on extreme performance. But um, how I got here, what's going on, why did I say I needed to do this and start this journey? Why did I leave the whole fitness thing? I even had somebody reach out to me that uh, watched the videos. Even though not too many people are watching them now, but I appreciate those that are. Um, why I deleted so many videos off of YouTube. So first off, for those that have been following and um, are asking the question, how come I'm not moving the videos from also posting them on Instagram anymore and why I don't have them on YouTube? I think YouTube only has about 80 something videos. Now, I deleted all the videos that had um, that was just me playing around or then didn't giving shout outs to folks or, you know, relationships may not have been the best and I mean business relationships not you know a lot of things a lot of you know you know how it is you know how it is in business when um money start coming in for the channel and stuff like that I don't want to get into any beefs that are going on between people you know and I don't have any problem with them but I don't want to be in between those two you know what's going on and um I'm still doing things on Instagram haven't posted in a while that's where I post most of the fitness stuff. And you see, I'm chubby right now. I'm still daddy of the year. I'm chubby. But for those that, you know, are still following with the whole fitness journey, I appreciate you. I'm still not taking anything 100% natural. I'm uh, sitting at about 260 something right now. Um, and I start the workouts tomorrow. So make sure you're on Instagram. Follow me. The summer is now on Instagram if you want to see how that journey begins with that. But how did I get here? Why am I saying... You know, I want to make a movie and all this stuff. So first, to understand that a little bit more, you got to understand who I am, where I come from. Like, what do I do for a living? Um, so for a living for uh, 17 years plus now, I've been in the professional development in the training arena. Um, I do professional development. I build training programs uh, for the federal government and um, push them out there, manage Training for military, civilians, contractors. I've done all that at some point. Um, executive development, stuff like that. So I pretty much, I get a thrill out of um, seeing someone come in, like to the organization and saying, dang, why am I here? You know, pretty much they might hate their job or they might love their job. But then they find out after talking to me that there's an additional perk, like for instance, uh, tuition assistance or um, like, how to cross train into something else and we pay for this stuff you know we set it up so as we can pay for that so that's what i do for other people and that's the short version that i can give you um and i take a lot of pride in that you know it's something you know seeing someone come in and um especially when they're down and out and i you know i don't like to go real negative but it's just a fact of life right um when they're down and out and you know i find out that everybody has a story at jobs and so for for people listening, make sure y'all uh, pay attention to this. Everyone has a story at work. That's what I found out. Like that person that might be an a-hole that no one likes, they don't talk to anybody, or they only talk to specific people. 
there's normally a story behind that person. They were not always like that. Like I'm finding that out and I've learned that over the years um, that people are not naturally um, mean and ignorant to everyone. It's just not in that environment, not in a professional environment. Something had to go down for them to even be that way or for folks to allow them to be that way. And I would normally find out that promises were either made to them. Uh, they bust their ass to try to get up the ladder only to find out that so-and-so did less than half the work they've ever done. And they got boosted up the ladder. Um, and to all the supervisors, that's a hard, hard pill to swallow for, you know, other workers. Um, when you look up and see that you've been working, working, working to do something you weren't even considered for something. And you see someone else and they say, you know, stay in your own lane. That's 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 unfair. It's unfair on many uh, occasions, but we're not here to talk about that. Um, that's what I do for a living. I love seeing people when they're feeling like beat and they're feeling like lost at their job or they, they feel like, you know, they just can't get an interview. They talk to me. You know, we connect. I'm, I love networking with people. I have a huge, as we used to say back in the day, Rolodex. <laughs> you know, I got a lot of contacts, professional contacts. And um, I like to play ball, if you will. Um, my goal um, in a professional world was to just uh, get up on the hill, you know, like work at the House of Representatives and stuff like that. But it took a little deter. So I used to wear suits every single day. As a matter of fact, I got like, I want to say maybe maybe about 15 different suits in the closet. Ties, over 100 ties, of course, sevenfold ties. All custom tailored um, shirts, um, Brooks, uh, shoot, like Brooks Brothers suits I got in there. You know, and that's just to, to name a few. Um, Alan Adams and all them stuff. Uh, Edmund Allen or Alan Edmund. Uh, you know, it's been a while. We've been um, out of uh, work, teleworking for a while, so I don't know. But these are the things I used to do. I used to love getting up, making sure my stuff was together going. And um, because situations have changed... I've sort of, for a long time, I had lost passion for what I do. And um, because of certain, you know how it is. When you go to work, you get a new supervisor, and then that new supervisor, you got to reprove yourself a lot of the time. And that's not true for everyone. But when you, let's say, if you're not, hmm, how do you put this? I know you can relate. I won't even exaggerate on that. Okay. So that happened, but let me move forward. And I'm just talking professionally and I'll get into the personal life. Then I ended up with someone, you know, ahead, you know, above me that actually did, you know, respect folks, you know, accomplishments and understand that, um, you know, even not just myself, but people around me, we didn't get here because we were pushed there. We actually earned our way to these levels. And so it's pretty cool to be respected at this point. Um, personal life, uh, went through a lot, man. I'm telling you, I went through a lot, um, issues with friends, family, you know, just the norm, the norm, but ended up getting married, ended up having a child, which will be one year old on March 8th. I'm so excited about that. Um, shoot. And that all in between all that stuff happening, right. I had a chance to like, really think like what really matters, you know, because for the longest time, I was chasing a dollar. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I was chasing a dollar because when I was young, quick story, quick story, quick story. It's it's quick. How much time we got? Look, because the camera's not moving, so I got to keep you guys entertained. Hopefully you like this. I'm just going to keep it serious. We'll just keep it straightforward. So a quick story. I used to work in a command post in the Air Force, right? I was a training manager about 30 feet underground. Uh, Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota. A uh, shout out to Eric Sanborn. Uh, gave me my first job as a training manager. I appreciate that. He made a path that didn't even exist. So I appreciate that. But we used to have this guy. So I worked 12 hour shifts, right? Beat me up real bad. Beat up everybody. You work uh, four days, 12, and then you're all four days. But you know, on that, that last fourth day, you got off at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. and didn't you? So that day would be counted as your first day. It's kind of weird, but 
So your sleep is all jacked up. No matter what's going on in the world, you still had to work. We didn't get holidays, no weekends, just four on, four off. That's what we dealt with. Well, I used to see this guy come in, right? He just come in wearing his little button down shirt, lollygagging. We're all in there at seven. We got to be there 15 minutes early by reg. And this guy comes in nine o'clock, 10 o'clock with his McDonald's and shit. We're going to the chow hall. That's like a little uh, cafeteria for those that are in school. Um, eating, we call it dining facility in the Air Force. Don't hate, you know. But we get our food and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're eating, you know, tasteless stuff, whatever the case may be. Don't take that personal to the chefs, you know what I mean? But, I mean, it's just we're not getting McDonald's. Let's put it that way. So, I used to get pissed along with a lot of others. You know, this guy coming at 9, he leaves out at like 3. Here I am. I still got another 4 or 5 hours to work and all this. He just lollygags in and out to work. So, he used to have to come into an entrapment area to get to his uh, office. But he had to call us to let him in every day, right? Because it's secure. So I used to lock his ass in there, man. I mean, like, act like I got stuff going on. I got, which I did, but I just didn't make it a priority to go unlock him and let him in, especially when he was leaving at three o'clock or four o'clock and call me a hater because I was hating along with a whole bunch of other people. But this dude was just leaving and here I am busting my ass trying to do things. Well, I realized that no matter what I did, I still had to take a test at a certain time. And after I took that test, if I got a good score, I passed the test. Then I got another grade, right? A, a promotion, right? It's based on a test. No matter what you did, this is how you got promoted. That's just it. Time, test, promotion. One day, I decided to talk to this dude. I think I was standing outside and he was coming out. You know, I just decided I needed a break. I went outside to get some air. Um, had somebody watch the command post. Somebody was at the command post, several people, just putting that out there. Um, and we chopped it up, and he told me about government employees. He's like, yo, I'm federal employee. I'm like, what's that? I never heard of it. And then he tells me he's great. He's making this money no matter what. He's getting paid. I was like, hell, what am I doing this for then? I joined the military to get my education. Hence how I started working, you know, in the federal government. I immediately said, the hell with this shit. I'm out of here benefits respect and i get to work you know decent hours um that was totally wrong I, especially when i went to the pentagon i had to be in there when the boss was in there i had to leave when the boss left we ended up working weekends whenever the hell it was work so but i enjoyed every moment of it but i put my all into it i lost relationships i lost relationships with family friends because i wasn't there for certain things i couldn't be there the things you know i didn't i couldn't even relate to people's issues because you know i couldn't be there because i was in a professional environment i was trying to make it all i wanted to do was live what i saw on tv you know the house car picket fence whatever the case may be not picket fence i just i wanted the actual high rise like condo type thing but when all that stuff started happening now i'm moving on now you know, I got married, kid, all this stuff, bad stuff at work. I started to realize, man, like all this stuff.